Welcome, Welling Workers, to our lesson for Sunday, September 10th, 2023. Our message today is entitled Proclaimed, and we take it from Mark chapter 1 again, only this time we look at verses 35 to 45. The theme of our lesson today is Jesus is worthy of us telling others about him. Let's go right to our verses and see what Mark said under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Mark writes, And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus departed and went out to a desolate area. And there he prayed. And Simon, those who were with him, searched for Jesus. And they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And Jesus said to them, let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also. For that is why I came out. And he went through all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. And a leper came to Jesus, imploring him, and kneeling, said to Jesus, If you will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to the leper, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left the man and he was made clean. And Jesus sternly charged him and sent him away at once and said to the man, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to them. But the man went out and began to talk freely about it and to spread the news so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town, but was out in desolate places, and people were coming to him from every quarter. Topics of conversation among us adults vary in many ways, it's, uh, but it is true that people who gather together uh, talk about what is interesting to them, what is on their mind at the current time. Even the quietest person might have something to add in a small group uh, setting. But one thing is certain, what we say reflects what is on our mind at the time. Subjects or experiences that captivate us will eventually find their way into our conversations. Jesus approached his earthly ministry with a missionary mentality. He never asked for money. He never expected any kind of reward for what he said or did. He simply demonstrated his love toward all people who needed it. As a result, those people flocked to Jesus. They recognized his genuine love when they saw it. They saw something in Jesus that they were not seeing in the religious leaders of their day. Jesus proved that messianic proclamation and sincere compassion were not mutually exclusive. In fact, when we allow them to work together, they are a powerfully effective way for us to share the gospel, much like Levi gave to us in last week's sermon. As we study this session from Mark's gospel, let us reflect on how Jesus is worthy of our testimony about him and consider how we can demonstrate his salvation through our words and our deeds. Let's go to these verses now and take a little closer look at them. In verses 35 to 39, uh, Mark writes very early in the morning. In fact, he says, while it is still dark, uh, Jesus here feels the need to rise early and to go out and be alone to pray to the Father. Uh, while it is still dark simply means it is before sunup. 
Uh, as you, many of you know, I get up quite early every day, and I'm often out uh, and about when the sun begins to rise every day, so I know what it's like to rise early. But uh, in Jesus' case, he intended to do that in order that no one would notice him getting up to go out so he could be alone with God. Jesus did make time alone with his Father. Luke, in Luke chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, uh, said he often found quiet places where he could pray. There is a certain lure to the crowds, and there's a temptation of popularity that, that comes with those crowds. Jesus calls his followers to remove those distractions, to spend time with God on a regular basis. That means we are to get alone with the Word and in the Word, praying the Word to our God. Mark calls place where Jesus went a desolate place. It is the wilderness. It's the same wording that Mark used to describe where John the Baptist was preaching at the River Jordan. Crowds were amazed by Jesus' miracles, but they knew he had come to do so much more. Now, I said they. Jesus is the one that knew. All the crowds knew was this man could heal. Him. And they were running uh, from everywhere to try to get this man just to heal them. Jesus, of course, had come to do a whole lot more. And uh, he needed from time to time, to get alone, to plug in to that power source that God and God alone offered him. That's the same with us. God is a power source for us. We just need to plug in from time to time to receive a recharge. And I hope that you are doing that. In verse 36, uh, they went seeking for him. Simon Peter and some of the other disciples, when they finally awakened, they saw Jesus had disappeared. So they went to look for him. They searched for him. The disciples were eager to maintain the momentum of the previous day. And they wanted to find Jesus and get him back to the public. Mark uses this word here, Searched. It also means to track down like one would track uh, its prey. A hunter would track its prey in the forest or in the safari. Peter and the others were enthusiastic about finding Jesus because they saw the next step in establishing the kingdom that Jesus had promised to bring. The disciples did not understand Jesus' need to be alone with God the Father. They were excited because of the crowd's response. This would have been especially important to the disciples as the crowds were coming from hometowns and villages from all the surrounding areas. In verse 38, Jesus says, let us go. Jesus told these disciples it's time to move on to the next place. His mission wasn't necessarily to draw crowds of people. He had come to preach the good news to as many people as possible. Our church at Powder Springs First Baptist is not to draw large crowds. We may through the preaching of the gospel. And yes, we do have a large facility. We have a large number of members. But that is not how we count success. Success is spreading the good news of the gospel to those in this community where we live have never even heard of it. Can you believe that? Our country alone, our neighborhood alone is a mission field. Jesus' ministry and message involved places that had yet to hear him and his message of the good news. As followers of Christ, this is our purpose and our ministry. And like I said, we have a mission field right in our own neighborhood. 
how many neighbors do you know who do not even go through the doors of a church? We're commissioned to take the good news out. We gather every Sunday for the education, the edifying of ourselves, and then we spread out over the week to announce the good news to those who have never heard it before. Verse 39, Mark says, throughout all Galilee. Well, in first century uh, AD, we have this area that used to be uh, called Israel is broken up into three major sections. One is called Judea, which includes the town or the city of Jerusalem. Another area is some area where the hated half-breed Jews lived. And then Galilee was uh, on the other side of Samaria from Galilee, I mean from uh, Judea. And this included Jesus' hometown of Nazareth. In verses 40 to 42, we see a leper has come to Jesus. Leprosy is a disease that still occurs in this world today. It can be treated now because of medicine's advances since Jesus' day. But people, and people do live normal lives after contracting this disease. But in Jesus' day, it was a death sentence. It was dreaded by anyone who would come down with that disease. This term, leprosy in the Bible, is a disease that affects every part of the body. And it eats away slowly at the body, putting its victim under a guaranteed death sentence. Lepers in Jesus' day were to isolate themselves because they were unclean and they were quarantined, as we would call it today, so that they would not pass that disease on to another simply by touching them. Lepers were not allowed to even wash their hair at that time. They were the equivalent of the walking dead that we see on television <laughs> these days or in the movies. Uh, they were required to shout if they were close to a road where people would be traveling upon it. And they were required to shout, unclean, unclean, unclean in the distance so that people could go widely around them. This leper, though, in verse 40, came to Jesus. He broke the law by coming to Jesus. But this man was desperate. He was bold, but he came in humility and bowed down before Jesus, falling on his knees and begging Jesus to cleanse him. You notice he didn't ask for salvation. He wanted his body cleansed so he could go back to the normal life that he had been booted from. He only asked for cleansing. But he had faith enough to know that Jesus had the power to heal him. But his question to Jesus was one of willingness. Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. At this, in verse 41, Jesus was moved with compassion or pity. Mark is the only gospel to record that Jesus was moved with some kind of emotion toward this man. Lepers of the first century would have to be avoided. Their appearance alone would be repulsive to human beings. Touching a leper would make a priest or any other human being unclean. It is possible they could catch that disease simply by touching a leper. But most times that did not happen. But even being in the presence 
some priests would be ceremonial, unclean. They would have to go through the cleansing rituals for those who had been cleansed of leprosy. But Jesus reached out and touched this man. Probably this man had never been touched since the day he was uh, called a leper and sent out. Jesus touched him, showing him his love and genuine pity toward his situation. Jesus placed that love and compassion over the rituals of the day, the regulations that the religious leaders had uh, put out and expected everybody to follow. In verse 41, we read, I will, says Jesus. Jesus recognizes and honors genuine faith. When we come to him with a sincere heart, he hears our requests and he moves to meet our needs. Sometimes he even moves to meet our wants and desires. Jesus' timing may not align with ours. Jesus, I want it and I want it now. But Jesus delays. Sometimes we think that's Jesus and saying no. But it's not. Jesus will do his will in his time. And we never have to question Jesus' willingness to answer our prayers. In verse 42, we read that the man was made clean. The man's healing was immediately. He was no longer a leper. And as soon as Jesus spoke the word, he was clean. But Mark's wording here does carry a double meaning. Yes, the man was ceremonially clean. According to the Mosaic law, he needed only to go to a priest and go through those rituals to demonstrate his cleanness from the disease. And he would be able to go back into the synagogue, into the temple, to the religious life of the Jews. But this man also received a spiritual cleansing. He had been healed from the poison of the sin that had infected his very soul. In verses 43 to 45, we read that Jesus sternly charged the man. Jesus was quite serious about this man not telling anybody of what happened to him. And Jesus commanded him, say nothing. This is a very odd warning for Jesus to give to this man. But Jesus didn't want the reputation of just another miracle worker or healer. Hmm? We have a lot of that on TV today. He, But Jesus didn't want massive crowds coming to him just to be healed. That was not what he was here for solely. He was to bring the good news of the gospel. He was committed to revealing the kingdom of God on earth. Distractions that healing brought would create and lessen the focus of his message of redemption. The distractions that the healing could create would cause that message of redemption to be lesser. Jesus also said, show yourself to the priest for anyone who had been made clean from their leprosy. They would need to make the necessary sacrifices according to Leviticus 13 uh, and 14 so that they could be declared by the priest to be clean and rejoin their home and the temple. Jesus was honoring the law of God as given in the Mosaic law. This incident proves that Jesus respected Mosaic law as long as it was interpreted and practiced as God intended. The big problem was the religious leader of that day, leaders of that day, had so corrupted the Mosaic law that it was impossible for anyone to be obedient to it. 
verse 44, we also see this phrase to them. Them here does refer to the religious leaders and the priests of the day. These people refused to accept the fact that Jesus had divine power. They said his power was by Beelzebub, Satan himself. But Jesus understood well enough that they would be stubbornly rejecting him all the way to the cross and that he was their Messiah. And they put him to death. Verse 45, we see the man began to talk freely. From this point forward, Jesus would avoid going into most towns because of such large crowds following him. These crowds managed to find him. He didn't need to hide. They'd find him anyway. The news in verse 45, this Greek word is logos. It's the word used to describe Jesus as the word in John 1.1. 1, 1. It does refer to the word of God when capitalized and, and in most places in the Bible. However, the people involved here usually were eager to share what happened to them rather than to keep their experiences under wraps. If you were being healed by going to where this man Jesus was and being healed of whatever your problem was, you'd be telling everybody around you. You'd be going to towns you'd never been to before to tell people what this man from Galilee had done for you. Jesus has done a lot for us. What are we doing for him today? Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you that you have, through your Holy Spirit, inspired this writer, Mark, John Mark, to write of the good news that your son brought into this world. And he brought it not only to his people, the Jews, but he brought it to all others as well. Father, Help us in this coming week to reflect our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ in all that we think, do, and say. In his name I pray. Amen.